YouTube, what is good? It's your man Riz from Doing Film Things. If you've been following me on Instagram, you've probably seen that I'm starting to jump into street photography. I've been talking about this a while, about how I want to get out in the streets, you know, walk around, get in people's faces, maybe take some incognito shots, you know, kind of the full gamut when it comes to street photography. So I've been talking a lot about this camera, the Canon 7, and I haven't talked as much about this one, the OM20, but this is also kind of my other street photography weapon. So for street photography for me, um, it's been a bit challenging because I'm used to, you know, taking photos in the streets, but usually it's in a very kind of slow, respectful, like at a distance way. But I'm trying to develop a bit of muscle when it comes to kind of getting a bit closer to people, getting those fast snapshots from people moving around um, and really capturing up close faces, but in the spirit of moving around in the streets very freely and kind of quickly. So I've been trying to learn the techniques required to do that. And I think I'm starting to settle very nicely into what I think is necessary in terms, from, in terms of a tool set. So first and foremost, of course, as I mentioned, the Canon 7. Um, you don't need a rangefinder camera to do street photography, obviously, but, but I really do like what rangefinder cameras have to offer, which is specifically two things. One is the size. So these cameras typically can be very small. Um, DSLRs like this obviously are, can be small as well, but I find that rangefinders typically are a bit kind of more compact. Um, and the lenses themselves are also very small, which um, is a really good thing when you're taking photos of people in the street because um, it draws a bit less attention, even if the camera itself is a, potentially a little bit bigger. So that's number one. Number two is actually having to do with the sounds that this camera makes. So this camera, when you take a photo, is actually very quiet. And I really like that because, um, again, it's about not drawing too much attention to myself. Um, with the DSLR, you have that massive mirror slap that goes pop pop and it's very loud and you know can be heard fairly easily. With the rangefinder, especially when you're shooting at slightly fast shutter speeds, it's just a very quick click. And you know, this camera isn't the quietest. I think Leica's are significantly quieter and some other rangefinders as well, but this one is quiet enough for sure. Um, so if, for example, if I cough or like make a little sound while taking the image, just like, <clears throat> like you won't hear anything. All you'll hear is me clearing my throat and you know, that's a very normal sound as opposed to the click of a shutter. So I love that. All in all, I wanna be as inconspicuous as possible because again, I'm new to street photography and I don't have that bravery that a lot of street photographers have where they'll just take a picture of whoever they want in basically any scenario and not care about what the potential reaction is gonna be. I do care a bit more and even if I did have the bravery, I'd still be very cognizant of kind of the scene and I'm not just gonna walk up to anybody and take a photo. So equipment wise, that's it. From a settings perspective, I've been shooting basically everything at f8. And I actually started at f16 you know, a couple weeks ago because I was like, oh, if I do f16, then I don't have to focus at all. I can just zone focus from one meter all the way to infinity and not have to do anything. And that's technically true, but what's the downside of that? At f16, you're gonna need much slower shutter speeds or you're gonna need much higher ISO film. And both of those are challenging because slower shutter speeds mean blurry images and higher ISO film means specific film stocks, much fewer options. Um, you can push film, of course, but pushing film sometimes leads to lower quality results in terms of the grain and the contrast and that kind of thing. So I've been trying to kind of dial back my aperture from F16 going further down towards F8, and slowly but surely I got there, and now I actually really like what's happening. Um, with F8 though, I still do zone focus, but I don't have the full range that I had with F16. So with F8 for me, I tend to set the left side of my F8 on the lens to 1.2 meters. And I think that's a perfect um, distance for me because one meter obviously is one meter, but I think at 1.2, that's probably the closest I'll get up to anybody anyways. One meter is very close distance wise and I don't think I'll be getting that close to somebody. I can very easily take a kind of lean back or a step back and get at 1.2 and I'm good to go. So I choose that explicitly because the further you go down the line, the more focal distances you're gonna get in that range. So right now at F8, I have 1.2 as the shortest distance, and then I have three meters as the longest distance. 1.2 to three meters, that's a pretty big coverage of distance. And I think most of the street photography images that I'd like to get are gonna fall in that range. So I don't have to focus. If I do have something that's farther away, I can very easily, without even looking at the lens, just go like this. And that half turn right there basically gets me everything from, um, let's say, what does it say? From like two and a half meters all the way to infinity in focus at F8. And you saw that, that was just a turn like that. Boom, I don't even have to look. So that's the beauty of the setup right now with this 35 millimeter lens. You don't wanna have to look at your lens when you're focusing because that obviously takes time. 
if you're walking around and you see something in the distance that's you know perfect moment that might disappear you honestly just go whoop and take your shot you like those sound effects um but yeah so i'm practicing kind of my quick focusing and i'm practicing um just kind of getting up and uh, close to people and taking the photos um the other kind of secret weapon that i have in my arsenal it's not really a secret weapon but it, it's something that i've been practicing as well is actually shooting from the chest so for example i have this right here which is a camera strap so i'm gonna put this around my neck i'm gonna go ahead and attach this camera to the strap and then you'll see when i'm standing the camera is basically down here and you can't really see it because i'm sitting but the camera is basically right at my belly height and if i stand up it'll come up even a little bit closer the whole point of this is that i can actually walk around with my camera pointing straight and I can hold it like this. And as you see, that's not the normal way to hold a camera. Normally you hold it like this and you bring it up to your eye. But if I have this on my chest, I can hold it like this with my thumb on the trigger for the shutter. And I can basically just walk around and very easily take photos without even having to bring the camera up to my face. So combine zone focusing with this kind of shooting from the hip. I know it's not the hip, but it's kind of the same idea. Um, and you can get really, really fast results. Obviously shooting from here gives you less control, um, at least, you know, because you're not using your eyes. So you have to kind of move your body and feel it. And I find that that's not too bad because basically as long as you're square to the subject that you're going to take a photo of, you know, you kind of turn your body like this and like this, the camera's going to move with you. The only tough part is the up and down because obviously, you know, you tilt up or you tilt down. That's very hard to see. Um, and it's a bit of a guess, but it kind of works most of the time. Usually this camera, you know, it's at chest level, like I said, it's going to be lower than most subjects that you're walking at. So just a very small tilt will get you a really good photo kind of from a downwards up angle. And I think for street photography, downwards up actually works really well because it adds this dimension to people. It kind of gives them this larger than life look. You know, that classic like, you wanna make somebody appear kind of bigger and bolder and stronger. You shoot them from below facing up. And for street photography, it just looks great, especially when people kind of catch you and look at the camera. You get a photo right at that moment when they're looking at you, specifically through the lens, um, and they're looking at you from above, looking down towards your camera. It looks pretty cool. So I haven't nailed any of those yet, but I'm working on it. Um, so overall, I think I'm kind of moving in the direction of getting more comfortable with just snapping photos of anybody. Obviously, I'd like to bring the camera up to my face and very quickly, boom, take some photos, but we'll get there. And even if I was doing that a bunch, I think certain scenarios are better for that as well. Because think about it, if you're walking around and you see something, the split second of having to bring your camera up like this might actually change whatever it is that you were looking at. So if you're walking around with the camera in your hand like this with your thumb on the trigger and you just kind of, you know, turn your body and see something very quickly right there, boom, you can take your photo. And it is very, very inconspicuous, especially if you're not staring at the person. I think when you make eye contact with somebody, that's typically when they kind of, you know, get your attention. And then at that point, you get the attention and they see your camera and they see you kind of moving your hand a bit. It's very clear you're going to get a photo of them. And, you know, from a lot of people, that's totally fine. And for some people, they really hate that. Um, with this method, just kind of going like this, if I see something I really want to take a photo of and I turn my body, I can at that point just kind of look away and boom, take a photo. And I tell you, it's going to be very difficult for that person to know that you took that photo, especially because of how quiet the camera is. Um, obviously if they see your thumb pressing the trigger, you know, maybe they'll notice, but your thumb's kind of already on there. So pressing it very lightly is not like a meaningful action. And it's very hard to kind of see that you did that. So again, it, this, you know, might be a bit of a roundabout way to get photos of people. But for me right now, where I am in my street photography journey, I think this is how I need to start. So I want to get really comfortable with the flow of just getting photos of people in the street and, you know, getting my camera up to the eye and getting in their face right now. That's just not in the cards for me done it a couple times and you know i haven't had any issues but um it's more about the rhythm and you know bringing this up here is just not a rhythm for me yet having it here on my chest and just kind of snapping with my thumb 100 percent rhythm right there and i and i've been enjoying doing it already i think my next steps are basically to start shooting a lot and to really figure out also what film stock i like a lot of those images you saw were in black and white and those are actually with kodak double x and i really like that film a because it's very inexpensive and B, it seems to hold up very nicely when you push it. Um, I think that film is rated at 200 or 250, something like that. I've been shooting it at 1600, which is basically uh, three whole stops. Um, I've been developing in Microfen because um, that uh, developer is very good for basically anything that you're doing high ISO, whether you're pushing film or whether you're developing higher ISO film. 
it really helps kind of retain some of the detail and kind of calm down that grain. Whereas if you were using a different developer, you might get a whole different view when it comes to the, the look and the contrast and the grain. Um, that's not a bad thing. You know, I might try some of these other developers eventually, but for now I'm going to stick to Microfen based on the recommendation from some of my friends. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my strategy for black and white. For color, I've shot Lomo 800 and I haven't shot it at 800. I pushed it one stop to 1600 and I really love the results. Um, there might be a slight breakdown in terms of, again, grain and structure, but I still think the images look great. The colors pop, the exposures look good, the shadow details there. Um, I don't see any issues with shooting low-mo at 1600 and that's probably what I'm going to do in perpetuity. Um, unless it's like an extremely bright sunny day wherever I am. Ultimately, that's what kind of determines how I move with this camera is the weather. So the last couple of weeks when I've been on this kind of initial journey, it's been very overcast and very, very cloudy here in London. So I've had some struggles when it comes to shutter speed. Shooting at f16 was not going to cut it. Shooting at f8 is a must. And in some cases, even stopping down a little bit further to f5.6 uh, is necessary. And of course, what does that mean? That means my shutter speed is going to change accordingly, but my focusing zones are going to change as well. So I'm trying to stick to F8 and really kind of master that, make that the chief kind of single point for me because F8 seems to work for me whether it's very, very sunny or whether it's like a bit cloudy. Um, when we get a very sunny day, like we had yesterday, that's when things get a lot more fun because I can leave it at F8. I can even maybe go to F11, but the point is my focusing zone gets real fast and real easy. And that's exactly what I want here. And of course the shutter speeds get to go a little bit faster at 1 125th, maybe even 1 250th. And in that case, should be no motion blur. It should be very easy to just kind of get there and pop people and freeze them, freeze that moment in time. Um, so yeah, moving around a lot, really trying to get some muscle memory and really trying to get out there and shoot as much as possible because I'm having a good time with street photography. And my goal here is to actually put some work together that's cohesive about the neighborhood that I live in here in the UK and it's called Brixton. It's in the south of the river in London. And yeah, I've been taking a lot of photos here basically the whole time I've lived here, which is almost two years now. And it's been great, but the one thing missing from my portfolio is those classic street images where it's just very fast, it's very kind of freezing a moment, it's very in people's faces, it's very raw. And I really appreciate that kind of work and I don't have much of it, so that's exactly what I'm going to try to do. All right, y'all, tell me in the comments, you got any advice for me in terms of settings, in terms of the film to use, in terms of the camera? Let me know. Whatever it is you have, tell me in the comments because again, I'm new to this stuff, so I'm looking forward to learning and kind of iterating on my process. That's what I got for this week, y'all. Hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something. If you did, please go ahead and leave me a like. And of course, if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe. Until the next video, y'all. Peace.